The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Hey, welcome to the program. It's the show that it's that you're watching. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm Ron Van Dam. I'm one of the people that are sitting in the chair right now. Actually, Ron is not here today. I'm filling in for myself. I'm Ron filling in for Ron. I'm filling in for myself today. I'm not as good as Ron, but I'll do the best I can to entertain you for half an hour. The idea of this show is to talk about things that other people don't talk about, and believe me, that actually happens here. There's no way of you to respond to me, and if you did, I wouldn't say anything back to you anyway, so don't even bother. And that's pretty much the way it works, just as a matter of introduction. I am an orthopedic surgeon. No, that's not true. Did you ever do that? Did you ever like just meet somebody and they say, oh, nice to meet you. What do you do for a living? And you just say something like outlandishly ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'm an orthopedic surgeon and uh, I've been doing that for uh, 72 years and uh, that's fine. Uh, we did a heart transplant last week. Didn't know what we were doing, but we tried it. Turned out okay. So there you go. You know, just do that. It's just, just fun. It's fun to do. When you go to a restaurant and it's really busy and you think like there's like a 20 minute wait and then the, uh, the host or hostess or whatever the, they say, uh, uh, well, can I have your name and we'll call you when we get a table? Yes, uh, that would be Dr. Van Dam. Oh, a table just opened up, doctor. Come on. I'm telling you, man, it doesn't hurt. Of course, that's considered lying. But who are we hurting? Who are we hurting? <laughs> now, don't do that. Seriously. Don't say you're an orthopedic surgeon, especially, because that's ridiculous. Because no one is. Anyway, um, I've been doing this for 30 years, and uh, I guess by now I should be doing it well, but obviously it didn't work out. So <laughs> here we are. Once a week I come into I do it on the radio and on that uh, podcast internet thing, which I still don't understand. Once a week, I come in here to uh, just do the visual version of it, although uh, the radio version is far more exciting because I have guests and all that kind of stuff, and I can be a little bit looser than I can on this thing. And if you care to join me on that, I do it every single weekday. It's uh, the Ron Van Dam Show on NewEnglandBroadcasting.com. We're on all the platforms, the Amazons, the Spotify, Shopify, Liquify. Apple Podcasts, uh, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Stitcher. Uh, you know, if, if there's a platform, we're on it. And uh, that's all. That's about it. Boy, I'm exhausted. I really don't feel like doing this. But it's okay. I didn't know if I should talk about this today because uh, my purpose for talking about it is not to complain it's to vent and i don't like to use this program as a venting machine but then a oh, venting machine or a vending machine and then i realized i started talking to other people about this frustration that i have and they all had the exact same one and sometimes even worse so i think i'll discuss it today and i must say in doing so that it is not my intention to discuss a certain business or business practices nonetheless uh it is what it is and I'm talking about the consumer value stores. What, Ron? We've never heard of that. CVS. Apparently, CVS, uh, excuse me, I forgot to turn off my cell phone, uh, which means that I am uh, tied to this uh, stupid thing. All right. So, uh, yeah, CVS. So, they actually started in Massachusetts. Mm. And now, of course, they're uh, nationwide. I don't know if they go beyond the nation. I really don't care. But there's a, a couple of zillion stores involved. And CVS is fine. If you have a prescription, they fill it. Um, you pay your little deductible if there is one. And the health insurance company that you're connected to uh, takes care of everything else. And that's really what CVS should do. And it's the only thing it really can do properly. Otherwise... It's overpriced. 
And if you don't believe me, take a walk into any CVS and believe me, they're all the same. And look at the prices of anything in the store besides <laughs> the pharmacy counter. And you will find that uh, you'll go, oh my God, are they kidding with the prices? Am I supposed to divide by three and then pay? what? What is this with the prices? Look, I'm not putting them down. My question to CVS is, why do you charge so much money for everything in the store? Why are you doing that? Answer is, most likely, I'm not talking for them, but most likely the answer is, People pay the price. They pay the money. We're doing very, very well. The CVS people are doing incredibly well. I think it's just because of the, the drugstore operation, but uh, they don't seem to care about the stuff on the shelf. I don't know because it's incredibly overpriced. I'll give you an example. It happened to me just last week. It's the holiday season, and I ran a little short on extension cords, and I wanted to run out and get a quick extension cord. Now, it's for indoors, you know, indoor lighting kind of thing. So, I need a light duty, which means the cheapest ones possible, probably made in China or Taiwan, and I'm not putting those countries down. They're fantastic places, I guess. So, I'm looking for an extension cord. A six-foot extension cord is like the shortest that they make them. And uh, I don't care what color it is. They usually come in green, white, or brown. And I know how much they cost because a week previous, I had gone to other stores to price them because I thought, well, maybe I'm going to not, uh, maybe I'm going to need another extension cord, but I'm not going to buy it right now and see if I need it. I went to Lowe's. You know Lowe's? It's over there. I went to Lowe's, went down the aisle, and uh, I see the extension cords, light duty extension cords. You know, the, the three little things in it, you know, and uh, light duty extension cord came in three different colors. Your choice, two ninety nine. Oh, OK. That's like nothing these days. Two ninety nine. Fine. Then I went to uh, Ace Hardware. You know where Ace Hardware is? It's over there. Ace is the place. I don't know the rest of the jingle. Ace Hardware tends, tends to be a little more expensive, I think, than the Lowe's and the Home Depots, but still. So, I go in there and I look at the extension cords, $2.99. Okay. I'm at CVS picking up a prescription. And I say to myself, ooh, I do need that extra little uh, six-foot extension cord. I know how much they cost. At all the stores, they're $2.99. I mean, it's like an agreement. So, I go over to their little aisle where they have some of the electrical items, light bulbs, things like that. And there's the extension cord. I think it's pretty, it was the same brand as, as what was at Lowe's. Six foot extension cord, exactly the same as what I saw in the Lowe's and, and Ace Hardware, $2.99. Guess how much at CVS? Go on, guess. $7.99. What? Seven, that's more than twice as much. Seven ninety nine for a little six foot extension cord that was two ninety nine at all the other stores. I got pissed off. Of course, I didn't buy it there. I got in the car and I went to Lowe's. I picked it up there, and everything was fine. I had a choice of three different colors. And then I started walking around the store there at CVS just for fun. And I started looking at the prices of stuff that I know what the prices are. And it was like, are you kidding me? Are you even kidding me? Now, I'm not complaining. I'm frustrated because I like that little store. I think that they pretty much go on the fact that people are going to the store anyway to pick up their prescriptions. So, uh, we'll sell them stuff. And they'll just pay whatever it is because some people don't like to go from place to place. You know, they're not into it. They don't have time, etc. <sighs> I think it's it's a coupon game. And I don't particularly like coupons because I don't have time for that either. Uh, I don't want to be driven to a location or attracted to a location because I have a coupon. CVS is very good at uh, printing out the Dead Sea Scrolls, 
And um, 20% off, buy one, get one 50% off, buy two, get one dollar off, buy 100, get one for free. I, I, It's always some kind of deal that I have to figure out. Sometimes it's very specific. Some, sometimes it's $3 off of any item. Excuse me, $3 off of any item doesn't even bring it down to the cost of what it really is to begin with in other stores. You don't even come close. 20% off. That doesn't do it for me in this place. You don't understand. It sounds wonderful to say 20% off, but it doesn't bring it down to the price that it should be. Uh, The other store that used to do this, which has since gone out of business, was Bed Bath & Beyond. I've talked about them before on the show. Lovely, lovely place. Because you find stuff in there you don't find in other stores. CVS, they're in other stores. The same items. Bed Bath & Beyond, a little more, yeah, a little more specialty. But there was no point in going into Bed Bath & Beyond if you didn't have a 20% off coupon because they were available everywhere. They would send them to you. They would send you through through emails they sent you. In the mail they send it to you. 20% off coupon. If you didn't have it, why the hell would you go into that store? Because 20% brought it down to a price that was workable. not Still not a deal, but workable. Okay, fine, whatever. 20% fine. Can you imagine going into that store and not having a 20% off coupon? What are you, crazy? What are you, crazy? And they since went out of business. Because their entire uh, business was based on you getting a coupon for them. (laughs) Well, CVS does that too. And apparently they're quite successful. They sent me a survey after I went into that store to pick up my prescription. And I must say the prescription was fine. The people behind the, the counter were just very, very pleasant, very efficient. For some reason, they want to know my birthday. I, I don't understand that at all. Uh, well, thank you very much for asking. Uh, why, are you trying to get uh, invited to a party or something? Like, you know, you know I'm here to pick up my uh, my prescription. Okay, what's your birthday? When's your birthday? Oh, that's sweet. My birthday. That's nice. That's awfully personal, though. Why are you asking me personal questions like that? I'm just here to pick up my prescription. Okay. Um, what's your weight? Uh, huh? Okay. That's fine. Did you graduate uh, high school? Well, I'm just here to pick up my prescription. That's all I have. That's all I want to do. Do you have any alcoholism in your family? Do you get along with your father? How old are you? Why? Why, why do I have to be a certain age to get the prescription? No, I just want to know your birthday. Just, just trying to get familiar with you. Just trying to have a conversation. When's your birthday? That's none of your business. Well, then why is it my business? It's your birthday. All right. So they did a fine job. CVS is fine with that, you know. Uh, So they sent me a survey, sometimes the same afternoon that I went into the store or the next day, there'll be a survey in my email thing, and it'd want to know how we did, uh, uh, we being CVS. And I'm saying to myself, you know, CVS, do you have any concept (laughs) as to uh, the fact that the general public kind of knows that everything in your store is overpriced? Do you have any concept of that? And then they have the audacity in the survey to say, would you recommend CVS to a friend? And I have to say, no. Are you kidding me? I'm not losing friends over you. Hey, Bob, you uh, recommended CVS to me. I went in there. The prices were ridiculous. What do you, why'd you recommend that to me? What are you trying to make me go broke? Why, why would you do that to me? I don't know. I don't know. If you don't want to be my friend, that's fine. But I'm not going to recommend. I'm not recommending my friends to CVS anymore. Um, okay. My opinion: CVS could be great. Maybe they're not overpriced to you. Whatever. Just saying. You know, if there's anybody that works at CVS or is involved with a CVS, um, bring your prices down. You could be even better than you are. You're better than that. 
You don't need to have those kinds of ridiculous prices in your store. Be consumer friendly. Remember your original title, Consumer Value Stores. Get back to it. Start charging, especially these days. A lot of them are seniors, people just trying to stay alive with their medications. Don't, don't, don't do $8 for an extension cord. I mean, come on. Seriously? All right, fine. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, just take, take a little stroll through CVS someday and just, just look at the prices. It's a good time. It's a, it's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> Here's something I don't understand. Uh, I used to be on Twitter. I kind of still am. But the difference is it's not called Twitter anymore. Twitter used to be... I was always controversial because people were saying a lot of crap. And then then Trump got a hold of uh, Twitter and started tweeting on that and kind of just ruined the whole deal for everybody on that. Uh, and then Elon Musk comes along. Uh, first of all, who names their child Elon? Hello? Elon? I don't even know what that means. Elon's coming. I think that was a song or something back in the 60s or 70s. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Elon and the last name Musk, and I guess he's named after a cheap men's cologne from the 60s. So Elon Musk, he uh, buys Twitter, you know. Of course, if he bought Twitter at CVS, it would have been far too expensive for him to buy. Anyway, so he buys Twitter, and then he decides to make all kinds of changes to it, and people start saying, "What do you? don't mess with it, Elon. Get your hands off of Twitter. What, what the hell are you doing? And people start going other places. There are other places to go other than Twitter. So Elon says, okay, I'll change the rules. I'll actually, uh, actually make you pay some money for it. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the name of the company. It's no longer Twitter. Don't say Twitter anymore. It's no longer Twitter. It doesn't exist. It's now X. Uh, X Twitter? Is that what it is? No, it's just X. X. And what, what's the logo going to be? A big white X in a black background. Very sinister. Very, very uh, dark. Very dark. I don't like that. Elon is like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? So now I'm not on Twitter anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm on X. Oh, sounds like a drug. X doesn't sound... It sounds like... If, you're, if your product is X, you're pretty much telling me, don't go there. Don't touch it. If you see an X somewhere on the wall, uh, don't, don't, touch, don't go there. Don't touch it. But this is what he calls his company? X? And I get confused with the logo because Xfinity, which is Comcast made up word, that's also an X. Now, I don't know if I'm ordering cable or, or, or making a comment on something. I don't know what I'm doing. They're, you people are crazy. Xfinity, it's not a real word. Infinity is. Xfinity is not. But it works. It works for Comcast. They actually branded it, and there you go. Look at the Facebook. Yeah, I think it's still called Facebook. I don't even know. It's a stupid name, but I think it's still called that. But now it's uh, Meta. I, I don't. I don't know. I, uh, it's a Greek symbol for something. Uh, people are just messing with stuff. Whether it worked or it didn't work, stop messing with it. Remember the, the Coca-Cola people? Uh, there was not a, a beverage in the world that sold better than Coca-Cola across... Even animals were buying Coca-Cola from the machines. It's amazing. But the uh, board members at Coca-Cola sat down and said, you know, we're outselling Pepsi and everybody else, but let's screw it up. Let's damage ourselves. Let's do the new Coke because everything's changing in the changing world. You got to be hip. You got to be in. I mean, you know. And they said, let's let's do the new Coke. 
Nobody bought it. They wanted uh, the Coke back. Well, you can't have Coke back. Uh, we already went to the new Coke. Well, let's come up with something better. How about classic Coke? Then just that's just the old Coke. But now, now you messed it up. You messed up the whole thing. The best-selling car about three or four decades ago, which isn't that long in the scheme of things. Best-selling car was the Ford Taurus. Everybody had one. Those things were flying off the shelf. They were selling cars like you didn't even need car sa- Didn't even need a car sa- car salesman. Carl, salesman. That salesman's name Carl. You didn't even name a. You didn't even name. You didn't even need a car salesman. People just walked into the dealership. Uh, just get me a Taurus right now. I need. Uh, I'll take one. They all had them. Every car on the row is a Ford Taurus. Then Ford says, let's not sell the Taurus. Let's make a new model. What are you doing? That's the best selling ever. Yeah, I know. Let's let's screw ourselves up, shall we? Let's, let's not even run them anymore. Let's just make a different. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm having trouble with passwords. I don't uh, I don't know what they are. I mean, I know what they are, but I don't know what mine is. I'm getting very confused by this because everything that I do requires a password. Every app, every everything requires a password. And I have to make one up. And the computer tells me or the cell phone or whatever the hell I'm doing it on tells me uh, if my password isn't good enough. <laughs> They're auto-correcting passwords now. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. You know, I, I, it says create a password. Uh, you can't do anything until you create a password. And I, and I create the password, and then there's a little red thing underneath, and it says... No, no, that's not good enough, you idiot. That's, uh, that's, it's not strong enough. What do you mean it's not strong enough? That's what I chose. If they're going to hack me, that's my problem, not yours. It's just, you know, it's, you're, it, that's a weak, it's a weak password. Don't do it. Don't, you have to have, uh, six symbols, two capital letters followed by, uh, uh an emoji and then an exclamation point and a comma. And uh, that's, you know, even that, that's not strong enough for you. And don't have your name in it or anybody in your family or any of your dogs or any of your pets. And one, two, three doesn't work anymore. I'm sitting there for an hour and it keeps rejecting my password. No, it's not. It's still not good enough. Well, finally, I figure one out and I get into the app or whatever it is I'm getting into. And uh, I always forget to write the password down. And then like a week later, I go back to this stupid thing and it asks me to sign in and I don't know what the password is. I, 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 I have passwords written down all over the place. It's, it's absolutely absurd. Uh, you can't use the same password for everything because then if someone knows the other password, they know that it's the same password for everything. And then you get hacked and everybody takes everything and... They're going to steal your social security number and your birthday like CVS does. So, um, and I guess there's something, I don't know, I don't know what it's called because I don't know any of the social media internet stuff. Uh, I, I have a, a social media manager because I admit I'm too stupid to do it myself. I, <laughs> I'm a little older than two, so... I don't know how to do it well, so I hired somebody to do that for me. And they explained to me what they're doing, and I said, look, I'm paying you money so that you don't explain it to me. You do it. Well, don't you want to know what I'm doing? Why, if I knew what you were doing, I'd do it myself. You're ruining your situation by telling me what you're doing, because I guess I could do that. Don't tell me. That's not business smart. Just do it and shut up. So that's what my social media manager does. Anyway, uh, I guess there's a some kind of app or something where um, you take all your passwords and you store them 
in the cloud. Now, who's going to go touch in the cloud, right? <laughs> who's going to go to a cloud? I don't even know which cloud it is. You know, on a on a on a nice puffy uh, day, you know, there's this clouds up there. I don't know which one's got my passwords. I have no idea. Is it that one? That looks like a rain cloud. Oh my god! If it rains, do my passwords get all over the place? It's raining passwords. Uh, if someone hacked into that particular app, they'd hack into every one of my passwords. So how is? I'm doing that so they don't hack into me. So I'm putting it in a place that can't be hacked so that it can be, but it could be hacked. It could be hacked, but I'm using it so it isn't. So I'm not hacked. So I'm going to the cloud where I, I, I assume it's easy to hack a cloud. I haven't tried to hack a cloud. And I still don't know what I'm talking about after all of that. The internet just confuses me entirely. And don't get me started on AI. Uh, that sounds like you're about to spell a word, but you just decided to stop. You know, like, I'd like to spell the word air for you. AI, I don't know the last letter. It's artificial intelligence. And um, what scares me is I know a lot of human beings who are certainly not anywhere near intelligent and it's a little scary to me that machines are smarter than some of the people that I know. That should scare you too. Because machines can be programmed to be smarter than you. I do not have the ability at my age, nor the brain cells, to be smarter than a computer or a machine. So we're getting into some dangerous territory with no legislation involved whatsoever. So, you could take a sample of my voice or whatever, or maybe uh, Trump's voice or Biden's voice, whatever the case may be, make a phony uh, uh, commercial, or uh, and it was, well, look, he's actually saying that. No, he didn't actually say that. That was artificially produced. That's not them. They never said that stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What are we going to do now? I don't know. I don't know. You know, for every good thing that was invented, there have been applications of that wonderful good thing that have destroyed things and become quite evil and horrible. And that's pretty much where we stand. And um, I don't know. I, there's a couple of generations coming up that are going to have to deal with this. And you think it's going to make life easier? You're going to be a bitch. Believe me, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. It'll get out of hand. Private enterprise will screw it up if they can in the name of making some good money and being the first ones to make that money. So beware, ladies and gentlemen, there are things to be concerned about. And that's about it. I'm, I'm going to leave you now because I have better things to do and I think you do as well. I assume you do. If you don't, then you need to find something else to do because I'm not going to go past 30 minutes with this thing. But I will be back next week with another program. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I, I really don't know what else to tell you. Uh, you can find me on NewEnglandBroadcasting.com. You can Google me. Uh, and it's perfectly fine to Google me, but that's as far as we should go with our relationship. And uh, again, every week they have a brand new show, and I come in here once a week, so you'll find me on this channel once a week, and that's really all I really care to deal with you at all. I do, do you get the impression that people are getting stupider? You know, do you ever see that uh, evolutionary chart where um, man is hunched over and then, you know, starts to look more human and then stands up straight and is carrying a briefcase? That chart, um, that now if you extend that chart, we're starting to hunch over again. We've dropped the briefcase because we don't need briefcases anymore. We're so lazy that we're hunched over and our spine is all curved from sitting we're devolving. We also don't have to think as much because computers are doing that for us. 
We don't have to go anywhere to get information because it's at our tip of the fingers. It's on our phones. I mean, my God, you don't have to get up and do anything. You don't have to pick up your food. They'll deliver it to your house. You don't have to go shopping. You have to put pants on. You can buy stuff without any pants on. You literally don't have to leave a chair. You can sit in a chair all day and get everything done. Be careful. Devolving. I wish you peace.